Hey guys, welcome back to InfoSec Patch Channel. What I'm going to be doing today is installing ESXi 7 into VMware Workstation and explain a little bit about what is hypervisors, what is VMware. I have a few slides here and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please subscribe, like, and I want to do an introduction here shortly because I want to make a new playlist with VMware videos. So like I said, welcome to uh, VMware 7. We're going to be installing ESXi 7 today. And just a little bit about me. These are some certifications I have under my belt. I don't have them all listed, but these are the majority of the big ones that I hold. Um, let's go to the next slide. Who am I? I have over 10 years experience in the IT field. I've worked from system administration to network administration to infosec and IT management. And you know, some of the technologies I've worked on, obviously I've worked on a lot more than this, but these are, you know, just the overview. Some HP, some Dell, Cisco, VMware, obviously, this is what this course is about. Palo Alto firewalls, Microsoft, and many more. Um, like I said, I hold quite a few certifications under my belt, so you're in good hands, like all state, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, a little bit, I, I love to learn new things if it's outside of technology as well, just always evolving. I love sports and you know spending time with friends and family. So what is a VM and what is virtualization, right? So pretty much a, virtu a virtual machine, which is the acronym VM, <clears throat> It's a software computer. Say if you have a Linux box, you have a Windows box. Now, you know, you can virtualize routers and firewalls and a whole bunch of stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's pretty much a, a computer within a host machine, meaning you have a powerful machine, say, you know, a, a terabyte worth of RAM, terabytes, terabytes worth of data uh, storage. And, you know, you just have everything housed on this one big machine. And it can be used like any other computer. Like my machine today we're gonna to be using is gonna be as a hypervisor, right? And um, why use virtual machines, right? Like why does people, instead of having one physical machine for every single server, your SQL box, your, your domain controller, your file server, your email server, your web server, your SQL server, whatever you wanna do, obviously that consumes a lot of power it consumes a lot of space and it's just not efficient, right? And you know, you can transfer a VM like any other file. So you, you have one VM, you have two hosts or three hosts and clusters worth of hosts. You can transfer using technologies like vMotion and, and there's other technology, we'll get into that. But, and you can easily clone a machine. So say for example, I have a master image, right? Of a Windows box. I have a Windows Server 2019 machine I can name it template. And now with that template machine, I can clone that, keep that as my golden image. Now I can have a new machine next week. I need to create a new file server. Boom, I can clone that, replicate it, and have a machine up in a matter of minutes, okay? And the different terms used is maybe a host machine, a host computer, a guest VM, etc. There's a whole bunch of um, names for them. But that's a little overview. <clears throat> and <clears throat> Excuse me. And what is a VM and uh, virtualization? Like I said, it's host and guest. A host computer is where the VMs are the housed, and um, a guest VM generally resides on a single host or a cluster, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And a host computer is generally a very powerful server and is designed to run multiple guest VMs. Just like I said, you have one big powerful machine, and you have your VMs that reside on top of that. Right, right here, like you see in this little image, virtual machine or guest, and then the host that runs the management. And um, so in this video, I have three VMs that we're gonna be uh, dealing with. I have my domain controller. I have a Windows 10 machine. This is how I'm gonna be managing and monitoring my ESXi host. And oh, this, is, this is a mistake. I wanna change this. This is supposed to be ESXi01 and it's 32 gigs of RAM I'm gonna to allocate to it and a 60 gig drive. And these are a few things that we're gonna be going through. We're gonna be adding a DNS record on our domain controller and we're gonna be changing the IP address 
on the ESXi host once it's done to 192.168.50.220. And we're gonna add a DNS suffix, suffix to the ESXi host. So it's gonna be sitting in the infosecpat.com um, domain. And we're gonna test the connectivity via ping, ICMP, and then we're gonna HTTP to it, All right? Cool, so let's get cracking. Let's exit that. And let me, uh, let me fix this so I don't forget, ESXi. Okay, cool. So let me save that. All right, so let's minimize this. And we're gonna be using VMware Workstation today. So let me make sure everything is good to go. Let me log into my domain controller and I'll show you a little bit around before we get started. So we are going to make sure we don't have any um, records created for ESXi 1 or 01 as we don't. So we can just open up PowerShell really quick and we can try to ping 192.168.50.220. Make sure that's not um, reachable. And then we can ping ESXi01. Okay, obviously, whoops. Uh, I messed that, I fat fingered something, ESXi01. And it's not reachable. Okay, cool. So. First things first, we're gonna go ahead, I wanna actually bring this over here, just so I remember the IP settings and stuff like that, because sometimes I will forget. So the first things first, so installing this into VMware Workstation or a physical server, it's the same exact thing. Obviously with a physical machine, you're gonna need the ISO on a USB, boot to the USB, but it's the same exact process. All right, so let's go ahead and go to new virtual machine. I'm gonna to go to typical, and I am using um, VMware Workstation 15.5. I haven't updated to 16. Um, let's go to typical right here, and we're gonna go ahead and install it later, that's fine. I wanna do ESXi, uh, VMware ESX, six dot, uh, even though we're gonna be installing seven, it works fine. So we're gonna name this ESXi01, and I'm gonna be putting this into a different location. So let me go ahead and explore to where I want to put my uh, put my VMs. So I want to go ahead right here. Let's go back here real quick. That should be fine. Okay, so boom, this is where I want to put it and go ahead and hit next. I want to allocate 60 gigs. All right, that's what I said. Yep, 60 gigs is fine. And I want to have it, I want to store it as a single file because I don't want this dynamically changing. I just want to have it one single file. So that's be fine. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and customize some settings. So as far as RAM's concerned, I want to put 32 gigs. Processes, I want to put four. So two and two. I want to make sure you have virtualization enabled. Um, as far as the CD ROM, I want to go ahead and browse to the image that I have my. Uh, ESXi, uh, VMware images, and yes, actually I wanna go here. I'm actually gonna go to my NAS, G drive backup, and then seven, boom, okay? So this is the, the image. I wanna put this on bridge. I wanna bridge USB, I wanna remove that, okay? And display is fine, okay? So let's go ahead and hit close here and finished. And once this is done, I wanna go ahead and drag this into here. And I'm gonna go ahead and boot this bad boy up. All right, so let's boot it up. And it's a very, very simple install. As you see, it's it literally takes five minutes, 10 minutes at max to install. And then once we are done installing it, we have to do some post configuration settings, um, make some changes. So we'll give this a few seconds um, to, do, to, to do its thing, to boot up. So let's go back to the domain controller really quick. So in here we have infosecpat.com. So what I wanna do here is I wanna create a new record, new host record, and I wanna put ESXi01, okay? So it's gonna be ESXi01. Let's go check this really quick. All right, that's still doing its thing. Um, and then the IP address is gonna be 192.168.50.220. Yes, I just made sure. And then I want to create a point of record as well. 
Okay, so give the, I'm gonna show you again here. So we ping in this, nothing, right? Host, all right, so watch this. Now we're gonna go ahead and create this host. Okay, boom, we're good. Close here, let's go to reverse. Make sure it's, it comes here, bada bing, here we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and do this again. And now we can see that it's, it's looking up a record. Obviously it's not up yet, so it's not gonna be reachable, but you get the idea. So you should definitely make that DNS change um, to make sure everything is gonna work within the DNS because DNS is super critical. Um, if DNS doesn't work, you're gonna have problems and it's, it's no bueno. All right, so go ahead and click in here. And as you see, it says, welcome to the VMware ESXi 7 uh, installation. I wanna go ahead and hit enter for continue. And then when I hit F11, make sure I hit F11. Um, of course, my, uh, my backlight went out. So we'll give this a few seconds. And then now we see the local drive. See, uh, we just created this local drive in VMware Workstation, right? So say, for example, if you have a big server, obviously you might have a RAID, you're gonna have a different configuration or maybe you're connecting your to different storage from a SAN or a NAS, not to your local. So, but in this case, we are connecting everything locally. We don't have any vSAN or any craziness going on. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit enter here. Okay, and US is my default, so I'm gonna hit enter. And my root password, I'm gonna make my fancy password. I'm not gonna tell you guys that one, but you can create your own password here and hit enter. And we'll give it a second and go ahead and hit F11 to install. Okay, and that'll go on its merry way to do the installation. Now, in order to get out of here, if you if you may know, if you, or you may not, if you're new to VMware, um, you just do the Control Alt and you can get out of the the screen. All right, so let's go back to DC one. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure DC. Okay, ESXi is in here. It's in the forward lookup zone and the um, reverse lookup zone. Perfect. So we'll give this a few minutes. All right, so here we go. We click back into it and then we can go ahead and remove the installation meter before rebooting. So hit enter and then it will reboot and do its thing. And once it's done rebooting, we should be getting an IP address from DHCP, but obviously we're not gonna be using DHCP because anytime you set up a server, you wanna have a statically assigned IP address so you, it's always reachable at the configuration that you configured, not just some random IP address that you have to go look it up and you know go look at DHCP, et cetera. But we should give this a few minutes. That'll take a few seconds. As you can see in here, right here, um, this is VMware 7, and this is the AMD, this is the, the Threadripper is my CPU on my local host. Okay, 12 core processor, and I assign 32 gigs of memory. Okay, so while that's doing its thing, we can go ahead and look at my task manager. Obviously, I have other things running, um, like my browser and other stuff, but we can go to performance, and we can see the, um, the memory that's being utilized is the 32 gigs, and the CPU is very, very light, as you can see, 7%. So my machine is pretty pretty powerful. Um, so you know you don't have to assign 32 gigs if you don't have it. But I like to do this because while I build up on my labs, I'm going to be installing virtual machines on top of that. So it's going to be virtual instead of you know inside virtual. It's like nested networking and all that uh, all that cool stuff. So we'll give this a minute. Okay. So as you can see here, it's reachable to DHCP on 192.168.50.67. Obviously, we don't wanna use that because if you remember, I'll pull this back over here. In my case, I'm gonna be assigning 220, okay? Cool, so let's bring that bad boy over here. So we can click back in here and hit F2 to, to modify and then root and then the password that you just configured. Okay, and hit enter. And then we'll come down here, configure management configure uh, management network and then network adapters we have this one adapter we don't we, we don't have multiple adapters so if you, if you have a physical machine you may want to disable other NICs if you're not utilizing them right so just hit escape here to cancel 
And let's go down to IPv4 configuration, hit enter. And we're gonna go ahead and set a static. So we go to set static IP and hit the space bar. And then we can just move down to this. We're gonna go 220 and everything else is the same. That's gonna be my gateway, that's my router, and that's all good, okay? So hit enter. We're gonna go in IPv6. I'm gonna go ahead and disable this because I don't want IPv6 enabled because it's just, the service is not needed at this point. All right, so hit okay. And now DNS configuration. So in here, we're gonna go ahead and use the following DNS servers. And my, my primary DNS for here is going to be my domain controller. So in this case, we're gonna to go to domain controller. We're gonna go ahead and open up, actually we can just open up here. We can clear this out and we can do IP config. If I can spell IP config space slash all. And then we can see the DNS servers that I'm using. So 200 and 201 and then my router and Google. Okay. So let's go, let's go make those changes. So 200. So my primary is going to be 200. Whoops. Sorry. Whoops. 200. And then my, my alternate is going to be my router because my secondary domain controller is not, not up anymore. So 192. 50.1 okay and then my my host name is going to be esxi01 okay that all looks good hit enter and then we're going to customize the dns suffix okay so this is going to be it uh, i'm going to show you it's infosecpat.com but i want to show you how to uh check that you can have set here um actually not in powershell command prompt but we're gonna go, and this is a DNS suffix right here. Uh, do, 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 let's see my name service right here. So infosecpat.com, that's the suffix, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go back. We're gonna go ahead and put infosecpat.com. Okay, enter. Okay. And then when I hit escape, I think that's it. And then we're going to go ahead and hit yes to the changes. Okay. Why? So now it's going to reboot. So once that's rebooted, technically we should go back to our, we can go to, to our Windows 10 box. We can open up command prompt. Make this a little bigger so you can see it. Fonts 28. That should be good. Bring this over. All right. Cool, so let's do an IP config. We're on that same network. Let's see if we can ping 192. Whoops, my num lock was off, my bad. Ping 192.168.50.200, which is my domain controller. And then let's see if we could ping 220. 220 is responsive, so that's good. So let's see if we can ping ESXi01. And there it goes. You see that? So technically, this is this is the, the full uh, full uh, full path to the DNS name. So now this one is up. It should be up and running soon. Here we go to manage this host. We're gonna go to we can go to HTTPS uh, colon whack whack esxi01. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and x out of here. Let's open up a browser, Internet Explorer. Okay. And let's go to HTTPS whack whack ESXi01. Okay, we'll give this a minute. All right, so obviously it's a self signed certificate, so don't worry here. We can go ahead and go ahead and continue to the website. And here we go. This is ESXi. This is our VMware host. So the username is going to be root and the password is going to be whatever you set up. Oh, let me. Okay. Never for this site. And here we go. Let's, uh, we can make this full screen. Just so we can see it. Let's give that a second. Okay. I don't want to join this. No, thanks. All right, so this is our 
ESXi host. Okay, so we should be all good. This is how you, the initial configuration and setup to get your ESXi host up. And in you know, more videos, we'll add some VMs. We'll create, look at the storage, um, the data stores, we'll create data stores and look at the adapters and devices, etc. cetera, um, the networking. So there should be two NICs. You have your VM, uh, VM network and the management network and the V switches and all, you know, there's a, there's a few things to go over in here, but that's, that's for another video. So that's pretty much how you get your ESXi 7 installed and configured. And, you know, um, this is an eval, you have a 60 days, but obviously for lab purposes, it's perfectly fine. So yeah, that is pretty much it. That sums up video one in this little um, new playlist. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know and hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for viewing and talk to you guys soon. Thank you.